So now the walls are painted, I am going to start working on the flooring. In this vlog series, I am transforming an old three-storey house into an eco home while living in my van conversion. So now the walls are painted, I am going to start working on the flooring. Um, flooring I have is solid. Solid oak. Um, I bought it from the UK because it's a lot cheaper than the coral plastic stuff. Okay. Yeah, so basically the way you have to do an oak floor, like a solid floor, is it can't, it's got to be able to move um, because the wood will soak up and expand and contract. So two things important about that. One, it's called like a floating floor. So here for hunting, I think. Um, and secondly, that although we glue it together, it's not fixed down to the floor itself. Um, and we need to leave like one centimetre, one point five centimetre um, gap all the way around to allow it to expand. Otherwise, what will happen when it expands, it will buckle and you will get all sorts of things happening. So, yeah, I'm going to start laying this out. This is the underlay, and the aim of it is to prevent the moisture going into wood. It's like, like a moisture barrier. Don't think it's that important because underneath there's just another room. If it was the bottom floor of the house, it would feel like it's pretty important. Um, but if there's something that's that important, I've got a load of leftover foil tapes. So I'm using that to tape it together. That's what it says on the, on the outside. Most of the floor in here is going to be okay, but where I've kind of like patched the floor up with concrete and did some construction work, it's little variations. Um, so what I'm going to do at this end, I might just use two layers of this. And then I can just use some little tile tile spaces just to kind of take out any potential wobble. I'm also using this mounted adhesive. So it basically turns into like a uh, like a kind of sort of flexible but pretty sort of hardish rubber. Um, so my idea is that if there's a bit where you know there's a little scoop um, and the wood needs support, I can either put in a hard support, which is just sort of sort of even up the floor, but on top of that also if it's kind of quite fine, quite thin, I can we just put a few blobs of this, like chunky blobs of this, let it sit down, don't walk on it until this is dry, which takes quite a while. Um, and basically then what will happen when this sets, it's just like a thickish rubber pad under the bit where you want a little bit of support and just kind of be quite liberal with it. Um, so that's the plan. Um, I've already done one room, I did a room next door, like a small room, small bedroom, um, and it seemed to work basically perfectly well. Just at one end, there was like a, kind of like a funny corner, which caused a little issue. Um, but with this sort of technique, it seemed to work pretty well. So basically, just gonna put this down. I'm using, these are all the ends. I cut off the solar bracket, um, just lots of bits of uh, galvanized steel. Um, and I'm using these uh, to basically provide sort of spaces around the edge. Um, and also when I get to the other end, and it's quite, I didn't have the tool to like hammer in the thing. I can kind of wedge it with a crowbar or if I'm on the end of the wall, but I can also like put these in uh, and kind of like wedge them, put, put a wedge in, so with three of them. So basically I'm using these as a substitute for probably the correct tools. I might put a couple layers here, just because it feels like it's a tiny bit lower and it just might, might make it a bit easier to, to kind of even out any bumps. Um, and then the rest of it as standard. I'm gonna just let these first three dry a little bit, just so I can kind of see, really kind of feel it, walk on it, like kind of understand if it's, Flexing too much if I need some more support and just kind of figure it out. It'll be much easier once I'm past the concrete part, um, but I just want to make sure. So I am now continuing to finish the floor and we've got the new camera, brand new camera. 
um, and it's ready now so hopefully got better sound again. Uh, basically I've actually had like four days off, something like that, four or five days off. Oh, I just like got into a bit of a hole and I went too far because like when I work too hard like bits of like my beard and like hair fall out. That started to happen. Not ideal, it's really annoying because like it's really hard to know where the boundaries are for how far you can push yourself because I feel like I just get up and work and kind of continuously work in the sort of pattern I was working. Um, it was obviously tiring uh, and I did it for five months but at what point? At what point? Where's the line? It's pretty hard to tell so um, unfortunately I found the line again. Um, so yeah, just uh, gonna have to take it easy a bit. But I mean, again, I think it's like the effects of it, it will kind of like help pull out, but over like a little bit later than rather than the period where I was pushing myself. So maybe it was like around the balcony or the really heavy work or the, or the heat, I'm not sure. But actually also resting while I just want to get stuff done, to some extent was more stressful than working. Um, so what I decided to do is for the next week or so maybe, I'm just going to do like half days. So then I have the pro progress and the things you're doing rather than just continuously juggle all the things that I want to get done. I can start just getting stuff done. So today I'm just going to finish this half of the room. Um, and then tomorrow um, a friend of mine is going to come and we're going to start wiring up the main box. He's an electrician so I can just make sure the box is done correctly. So I'm sure I can work it out. But I want it just to be right because often with these things you work it out and then it's kind of like half good and by the time you're done you're like oh it'd be great to do it again so I just want to get it done well first time and that means I can start wiring up the whole house for like the final electric fit with the lights working so yeah so you're just going to work with him in the next couple of days um, but try and finish this for today. Something okay, else, yeah, yeah, yeah. another one here. Cool. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, what we're doing here, especially what Carlos is doing here, is we've got each floor, we've got each floor broken down, uh, and that means that you know we've got the switches and the lights for lights and plugs, and then we have the kitchen lights, plugs, and then we've got the ground floor. And the other thing we'll do is basically put in um, a ground spike. So we need to basically find, he's got a sensor, we've got to find a place, um, maybe in the floor in here, because it will go to the soil, or maybe we have to run a cave outside or something to basically get a good ground spike, um, which all of the earth will go to from the house. It's gonna be artistic, isn't it, in the end? <laughs> hope so. This, I don't know if it's going to work, but at least it, <laughs> it will look would, good. Yeah, it will look that's the important thing. <laughs> so what we do, what Carlos is at the top is he's left the excess cable up there, which means if you want to change things in the box later, we've still got some cable to do it, which is a pretty good idea. When we've connected up this main box to the mains, then we're going to power everything off. So we're just putting in some replacement plug sockets, which means we can power the house and barn as we're doing it now with the extension leads. Um, and then we're going to look at trying to get the solar connected up. We'll come in through these uh, isolation switches into the box and we're using this conduit channel which will go all the way up there as well um, to connect it into the box and kind of make it tidy and neat and uh, uh, compliant to the regulations. Yeah, it's starting to look really good. Quite nice to see this panel start to be populated by thousands of cables. <laughs> it's good because there's a lot of things which watching Carlos wire up this box, which if I was doing it, I wouldn't have done like running the cables behind or connecting up. It would just been like a lot of like sort of stress whether you're doing it right, but also um, little tricks and tips which you just know as part of the course, which which I would know, and it, it would 
and I would never be messy and I'd want to do it again, but it would just be yeah. another thing. And also like just hiding a bunch of extra cable up here in case you want to do something where you could add a bit of extra wire in or something like that. So It's not finished, so it's want to look. You don't know about it, it wouldn't have my yeah, iPod thing tapped on. Yeah. But yeah, so it's just a matter of yeah, all these little things. It's good to learn, learn from the master. Yeah. <laughs>